In order to be able to effectively work with WMI, you really need to be able to explore the WMI namespaces on a given computer. Now Windows PowerShell does provide some commands that let you do so, but the way it doesn't really doesn't lend itself to browsing and searching very easily. So what I like to do is obtain a third party tool. I'm going to go to primaltools.com. This is a free tool, so it won't cost you anything. When you get to the website, click on Community Tools, and then scroll all the way down almost to the bottom of the page until you find the WMI Explorer. Download that. Now it doesn't require any installation. This is a, a statically compiled executable, so you can actually pop it onto a USB drive and carry it around to whatever computer you need to explore WMI on. Keep in mind that each computer in your environment will have a slightly different WMI namespace. I've already copied it over to this server, so we'll load it up, and after a moment it loads all of my WMI namespaces. Now you can see that each namespace roughly corresponds to a major product or technology distributed file system, domain name services, Active Directory, IIS, and so forth. The kind of cool stuff that's related to the Windows operating system and to your computer hardware are under the root CIM v2 or Common Information Model version 2 namespace. And when you click on that, it is going to take it a while. There are thousands of classes within this namespace, and it does take it a few seconds to sort of enumerate through them all and find everything. For the most part, you can ignore the classes that have a double underscore at the part of their name. Um, those are system classes, and you won't work with them much. The classes you're going to pay attention to are the ones that start with CIM, and especially the ones that start with Win32. These are alphabetical in here, so let's say I needed to find something that would let me work with uh, partitions. Well, I'm already in the P's. So let's just scroll back a bit and see if we can find anything on partitions. See, we've got patch file, patch file, patch, parallel port, nothing on partitions. Well, what else might a partition be called? Um, I could see it maybe be, being called a disk or a, a logical disk. So let's take a look under D. And this is, unfortunately, how you have to sort of discover things. Uh, I do have disk drive. It's not quite the same thing, though. A disk drive is a physical disk. Um, oh, disk partition. There we go. So I can take a look at the properties of this to see what information this class exposes. Um, it'll show me its caption, uh, all sorts of stuff, disk index, device ID, um, really good information in here. I can take a look at instances to see all the instances that exist on this computer. Here's instance number zero, or the first instance, and it'll show me the values that go in each of those properties. So I can see that a device ID, for example, is the string disk number zero partition number zero. Now there is another one in here called logical disk. Let's see if it provides anything different. Uh, see its device ID property is a little bit different. That's the drive letter that I'm accustomed to seeing. So depending on what I'm after, this might be the class that I wanted to work with. I notice that this will on a hard drive show me how much free space. That looks like it's being measured in bytes. And I wonder if it's got that. Yep, there it is. It'll also show me the total size of that logical disk. So this Explorer is a great way to sort of browse around and, and find things. A complete set of documentation, though, is not part of what it does. For that, unfortunately, we're going to have to turn back to the Internet. Given that I know the class name I want, Win32 underscore Logical Disk, hop on my favorite search engine and punch in that class name. For the most part, the first hit you find is going to be on the MSDN website, or somewhere on Microsoft's website, and it'll have all the information about the class, if the class has actually been documented. One of the downsides of WMI is that a lot of classes simply have no documentation. The product team that programmed the classes didn't have the time or the resources to produce documentation. The Win32 classes, which are for your core hardware and operating system stuff, are pretty well documented. You can scroll down and see what each property does. Uh, in the case where a property is a numeric value, like drive type, it'll show me what those mean. 4 is a network drive, 3 is a local disk, and so on. At the very bottom, we'll get a little list here, and it says that this class requires at least Windows 2000 Professional or Windows 2000 Server, so it goes back quite a ways. I should be able to use that on most of the computers I have in my environment. Uh, and many of these actually also exist on NT4L. That's right, WMI existed all the way back to NT4. 
So once you've found the documentation, you can learn a little bit more about the class, figure out how it's used, and so forth. But this WMI Explorer is probably going to be your key to finding those class names, and you're really just going to do that by browsing around.